Hi, Father Barnabas Powell back visiting with you from Saints Raphael, Nicholas and Irene, Greek Orthodox Church. Behind me is the White House that we've just purchased and are remodeling it to a uh, church fellowship hall that we so desperately need because then that means we can open up some space in our chapel to have more seats uh, for more folks that are coming in to the church. It's an exciting time at Saints Raphael, Nicholas and Irene, Greek Orthodox Church, and you're invited to become and uh, come and be a part of it and join us. A lot of great events going on. Anyway, it's just a it's going to be going to be a wonderful time in the next several years as we continue to watch the Lord grow this vineyard that he has planted in this space and uh, we're excited to be a part of it. Another thing that we're excited about is this week's homily. And I want you to think about something pretty significant. And it is this. How do I escape the trap of narcissistic thinking? How do I escape the trap of self-centered choices? How do I break free? How do I create the proper balance between reasonable expectations and the unreasonable expectations that I put on other people that makes my life miserable? Jesus is going to have some very, very straight talk for us today in the gospel. And so I want you to tune in and listen to it, and we'll be back right after this and uh, say goodbye. Take care. I always look forward to this passage when it comes around because it's, um, it's so very familiar to us, and yet at the same time, every time I read it, every time I come across it, I see something new. I see something more powerful. I see something more, more challenging for me. I don't know if you uh, keep up with the uh, news in Greece at all, but there is a political party in Greece called Golden Dawn. They kind of pride themselves on being neo-Nazis. And they won seats in the parliament in Greece the last election cycle. And they have been acting like neo-Nazis. Recently, in fact yesterday, the nation of Greece, the, the government of Greece, had the leaders of, the, of that party arrested. This will probably trigger new elections in Greece because uh, Golden Dawn was one of the coalition partners in the ruling, uh, in the ruling uh, government party that is, that, that is running the, the government now. Those of you who have kept up with what's going on in Greece, you know that the nation of Greece has been suffering horribly under austerity measures because of years of spending uh, and not so much collecting. And so the consequences have been extremely difficult for the nation of Greece, and it has pressed the nation in many ways to the point that the nation of Greece today has an unemployment rate of 27% and is in the seventh year of recession. Unbelievably difficult. And the reason why I bring that up, dear ones, is because it's interesting when tough times come, what it uncovers in our hearts and in our lives, what is happening in the political world of Greece and in other places in the world, not only Greece, but Spain and Portugal and, and, uh, and uh, Ireland beforehand. All of these things that are happening, this press of economic difficulty uncovers people's true motivations. That's what pressure does, folks. That's what pressure does in our lives. Pressure in our lives uncovers our real selves. Pressure in our lives uncovers our real motives, our real attitudes, our real actions. When we're pressed, where we're in a difficult situation, when we're in a hard situation, the tendencies toward either selflessness or selfishness are manifested to everyone. That party in Greece manifested the notion that we must, that, and it's an old notion, folks. It's not, just, it's not just a Greek notion or a Russian notion or an American notion or a Roman notion or any other notion. It's an old human notion. Us foreign no more. We must have, we must exclusively keep our place for our kind. Not those outsiders. We've got to keep our place pure. 
and unsullied by the dangers of those that are different than us. And that's what it uncovered. Our gospel lesson today does that very same thing, but in a healthy way. Our gospel lesson today uncovers who we really are, but in a way that invites us towards peace and salvation and not towards conflict and schism and division and us versus them. You see, brothers and sisters, conflict will always take you to one of two places. Conflict will either draw you closer together or it will drive you further apart. That's what conflict does. Conflict does that in human relationships. It does that in political relationships. It does that in friendships. Conflict, when it comes, and guess what, gang? Conflict always comes. If you've been married more than 10 minutes, you know <laughs> conflict always comes. I had one couple uh, came to me for counseling, and they said, Father, we're just so shocked that we've had this disagreement. I said, why in the world are you shocked? Well, we just were in such, we were in so deeply in love. We were in love. Well, we just couldn't live without each other. And now we've had this fight and, and, and I'm angry at her and she's angry at me. And does this mean it's over? Amazing. Have we really bought into the lie of our modern culture that our own personal comfort and convenience is really the most important thing in our lives? Have we really bought into that lie? That my own comfort and convenience, my own peace of mind is more important than any other truth in the universe. Talking about it. By the way, it, we only got started getting in trouble when we started calling narcissism self-esteem. But as we look at our gospel lesson today, our gospel lesson invites us to another path. It's a familiar passage. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. By the way, that's a lot harder than it sounds. Because if you're able to really allow people to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, that presupposes that you know yourself well enough to know your strengths and your weaknesses and your tendencies towards selfishness and self-centered living, your own tendencies toward narcissistic attitudes. Because, brothers and sisters, if you say to people, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and you treat others badly, you don't get to be surprised when you're treated badly. You should never be shocked. I told this couple this, by the way. You should never be shocked when these difficult times happen. What should shock you is that you're shocked that they happened. The best way to deal with something like this is to be prepared for it. But if you don't know yourself well enough to know the places where you tend towards a narcissistic or self-centered attitude in your life, then you're going to treat others like you expect them to treat you. And if you treat others with a self-centered narcissism, guess how they're going to treat you? Then Jesus goes on to make it much worse. He says that you should love your enemies. Love the people who hate you. It's no great reward to you if you love people who love you. Heck, anybody can do that. But if you love those who don't love you, now we're talking. Then he makes it even worse. It's like falling downhill with the Lord in this passage. It just keeps getting faster and faster and worse and worse. The Lord Jesus then says, do good to those who do bad to you. Even sinners do good to those who do good to them. Tit for tat after all. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Isn't that the attitude we have? And yet Jesus says, no, scratch his back and don't expect anything back. And then, now the Lord goes completely out of bounds. Now he's going to mess with my money. And the second you start messing with my money, you, you're going to have, you're going to, it's, this is not, we're not teasing anymore. This is serious stuff. Man's going to mess with my money. He better, 
he better be ready. Lend to those expecting nothing in return. Why, even sinners lend to other sinners expecting to get money back. But you are called to lend expecting nothing in return. I don't know about you guys, but the whole banking system would collapse if we lived by that. So what is the Lord trying to tell us this morning? We started out talking about how pressures and difficulties in life reveal who we really are. Our difficulties, our conflicts in our lives, our pain in our life, our joys in our life give us an opportunity to know ourselves well enough so that we can become the men and women that God has called us to be. It is only when we ignore the lessons given to us by regular life that we stumble and we fall and we find ourselves in difficult situations. This morning, the gospel of Jesus Christ invites us to have a matanya, a repentance, a change of our mind. It invites us to deal with the root problem of every one of our challenges and our difficulties. Are you ready? The gospel this morning invites me to deal with the root problem of my heart. And that is, I really do think life revolves around me. I really do struggle with pride. I really do hold my life filled with expectations of others to make me happy. And because of that weakness in my own heart, I live my life in a self-centered way. By the way, that's varying degrees, dear ones, either big ways or little ways. The key is to root out this sickness in my heart so that I might live free. Can you imagine if you, if you took no notice of the mistakes of others around you, if you simply didn't even recognize that they had any faults, if you just simply never saw the fact that they made mistakes and you only noticed your own mistakes, why, you'd be free to love everybody. You'd be free to love every person you meet. Why, they don't have any mistakes. I'm the one with the mistakes. Oh, but Father, they may hurt my self-esteem. Good. <laughs> If you could live in such a way that your expectations of others were set free from any payback of any good that you ever did them. If somebody does something good for you, or if you do something good for somebody, you simply forget about expecting anything back. But how many times have we said one thing with our mouth and lived another way when we did something good and in our heart of hearts we expected, okay, I put a little stuff away in the bank for that now. When I need something, I'll expect him to help me. Why, it's only fair. But what if you simply took no notice of the expectations of other people? What if you were so free that you could love everyone you meet without expecting anything in return? Father, that's impossible. Not really. It's just hard. G.K. Chesterton said it best. He said that Christianity has not, has not been tried and found wrong as much as Christianity has, not been, has been tried and found difficult. The Christian life, brothers and sisters, is difficult. It's hard to stay awake to my own propensity for choosing myself and my attitudes and my actions and my best interests, so to speak over everyone else around me. It's easy for me to be self-centered. It's hard for me not to be self-centered. That's the reason why the church in her wisdom gives us regular prayers, gives us regular worship services, gives us spiritual tool after spiritual tool after spiritual tool to teach us how to move away from that narcissistic, self-centered attitude and towards the freedom of living life, loving everyone you meet, and expecting nothing in return. Because, dear ones, 
The bottom line is this. The God who made you, the God who gave you life, the God who gave you this very beautiful day, the God who gave you the very breath that you enjoy in your lungs right now, the God who just gave you that last heartbeat, the God who made you and who's blessed you with so many things in your life has expected nothing from you in return. He's only invited you to come and be with Him. And He's told you this, if you come and be with me, I'll give you everything I got. I'll give you myself. God has expected nothing from you in return. Oh, but what, Father, what about the, all the do's and the don'ts? What about the commandments? By the way, did you notice they're not ten suggestions? All of those are God's loving outreach to you to break the back of the insidious power of self-centeredness that so grips our lives and even consciously or unconsciously shapes our actions and our attitudes and our motivations and our behaviors. How many relationships could you have saved if you didn't notice your friend's faults? How many relationships could you have salvaged if you set those next to you free from the power of expectations to bring bitterness and anger and disappointment into your heart? How many friends would you have today if that's the way you lived? This morning, our gospel lesson gives us the key to happy marriages, raising our children well, having wonderful careers, Wonderful friends and supportive families. It's a radical choice. It's a tough journey. But every time you try it, every time you work at it, it pays off a hundredfold. Love those who don't love you. Do good to those who don't do good to you. Lend to those expecting nothing in return. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Amen. So, what would your life be like if everyone in your life were free of expectations to make you happy? What if you were free to love anyone and everyone in your life and every person you met freely and unconditionally what if you were so free that your heart was protected by the grace of God and by humility from ever being overwhelmed by other people's false expectations ever again that sounds like a wonderful life to me and that is exactly the pattern of life that the Lord Jesus offers us in this orthodox Christian way of living so, I want you to think about that and I want you to pray about that in your own life. I want you to make that something you hunger for. And then know that the hunger that you feel for that kind of life is satisfied in the Orthodox faith. Come and learn all of the wisdom and all of the disciplines that will help you achieve the very wonderful goal that we just talked about. Thank you for visiting with us at St. Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Greek Orthodox Church. We are a parish that is open for you. We'd love to see you in church one Sunday. Sunday services start at 10 a.m., and then we have Sunday school for the kids, as well as a wonderful fellowship hour after the Divine Liturgy. So you are welcome. I hope that you come and visit with us soon. I'm Father Barnabas. I'll see you next time.